Hey guys, this is Ada coming in to do a video. Um, this video is going to be entitled, or this teaching is going to be entitled, Who's Family Ties? Okay. Guys, what I'm going to talk about today is family ties. And as a marriage and family counselor who's worked as a therapist, you know I can speak from both perspectives, uh, the natural and the spiritual. Okay. And what I can tell you that there are healthy family ties and there are unhealthy family ties. A lot of the kids that I have worked with who came through um, the foster care system or who ended up in residential care because there was either some type of abuse or uh, there was just a to they were in a toxic environment, they ended up in care be due to those family ties. During the video doing a video but anyway um you come on I'm just alerting you but anyway uh they ended up in that in residential care due to um some type of abuse or maybe the child acted out and went to um a youth facility you know to be um what do you call it a correction center a youth youth a correction center for you <clears throat> but anyway my experience was it was a lot a lot of it the kid was acting out because of what was going on in the family and so the kid was just kind of acting out because of whatever dysfunction was going on and that's not to say that at some point that child didn't need to be held accountable for their behavior but a lot of times when you come from <clears throat> an unhealthy dysfunctional family that causes uh, certain behaviors but today from a spiritual perspective I'm going to talk about family ties because you know family is important family is valuable but according to Jesus family is not the highest level of relationship Jesus is and so in Matthew I'm going to go to that scripture and read it in Matthew 12, 5, 50, it says, Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Okay. <clears throat> well, when you were born again or came into the knowledge of Christ and you accepted Christ as your personal Savior, well, you were put placed into God's family. Okay. <clears throat> now, your family may not be born again. Or they may be born again, but they may be out the will of God. So... <clears throat> if that's the case God expectation for you is to of course walk in love with your family but you have to understand that your real family now is the spiritual family of God those who have been born again in the kingdom and submitted to God's will and God's way because believe it or not there is an antichrist spirit in the world <clears throat> I'm sorry that parades itself as the spirit of God and this spirit is anti-marriage. This spirit is anti-God. Anything that God is for, this spirit is against. And this spirit could come through mama. This spirit can come through daddy. This spirit could come through grandmama. Anything that's against God is anti-Christ. Anything that's against God's principles are anti-Christ. And so that's why Jesus said, those who do the will of God, though that's my family. So people, I want to talk about familiar spirit. I want to talk about family spirits. That's what a familiar spirit is. It's a family spirit. And a lot of times, generations, these spirits have been in family for generations. And they do not want to give up their territory. And so when you're born again, they're not necessarily going to give up trying to pull you back into that darkness. They don't care if they have to use mama. They don't care if they use daddy. They don't care if they use sister or brother. Their goal is to get you back into what's familiar and what's comfortable. Because a lot of times when we renew our mind and we really begin to serve God, we don't want to <clears throat> serve God. We don't want to connect ourselves with the world again but see the enemy comes very subtle and he doesn't care who he used for example peter 
told Jesus not to go to the cross. You know, he didn't want him to die. Don't, and that sounded good. That sounded, but what did Jesus say? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus realized what was operating in Peter. And so I say to you, believers in Christ, those who are submitted to Christ's will and way, your family are those who do the will of God. Anybody that's going against your marriage, anybody that's going against um, the things of God, that's of the devil. That's not of God. Do not be deceived because God is not mocked. God is not mocked. But remember, they're family spirits. They want to keep you pulled down into that system because this spirit been operating generation. He's not going to give up his territory overnight. That's why we have to continue to renew our mind in the word. We have to continue to fill our mind with the word. Because when the enemy comes in and he finds that space empty, he brings seven more spirits more powerful than the first one in. So that's why we have there have to be a continuation in the word of God. The Bible said those who continue in the word is my disciple. He didn't say those who start in the word. He said continue. And what he mean by that? We continue applying God's principles to our life. Not just continue to read it, but we continue to apply the Word of God. And a lot of times, that's going to separate us from some people. It's going to separate us from family. It's going to separate us from friends when we continue to walk in the Word. But then God has placed us into a new family. A family who is submitted to God because all Christians are not submitted. All Christians does not walk with the Lord. They're not submitted to his will away. A lot of them have fallen off track. They're submitted to their way. They're submitted to their five senses, what they can touch, taste, feel, and see. And see, that's corner-minded. To be corner-minded is, is hostility toward God. And to be corner-minded is death. But to be spiritual-minded is life. And we don't always walk in the spirit. We have to continuously submit ourselves to God to connect and to be, uh, to walk and be led by the spirit. Because we're in the world, but we're not of the world. But we have all this stuff bombarding us from on a daily basis. And so we have to be mindful that when the enemy come in, he's not going to come through a stranger. Who is he going to use? He's going to use a family member. He's going to make you doubt what God's word says. If God has promised you, you're walking in the promises of God, and you're being faithful, you may not be seeing results right then, but if you continue in the word, you're gonna see, you're gonna reap some fruit. He said, "Do not be weary in well doing, because the word said, don't be weary in well doing, because in due season you will reap a harvest, and you will." But God's gonna test you. He tests the heart. He tried the mind. If you belong to Him, He's gonna test you, because it's His will that you bear more fruit. Now that is your family. He's your father, and your sisters and brothers in Christ are submitted to His will, His way. Now, there's religious people who may be in your family. They may, have, they may be saved, but they may not be walking in the will of God themselves. So if they're not walking in the will of God, what can they tell you about your marriage? If they're not walking in the will of God, what can they tell you about their finances? A lot of times, you know, they're trying to direct your path when their house is falling down, so to speak. So we have to be wise. We have to get wise counsel. You know, and um, we have to understand what's operating in people. I don't care if they is family members. So we have to watch those family ties, those soul ties. Because soul ties, what happens is when you're tied to someone, you can become in, they become you and you become them. And whatever their hatred, bitterness, or wickedness is, it can be part of you. And see, when we become a part of God's kingdom, we don't want to tie ourselves or yoke ourselves to unbelievers or people who, is not, who are not submitted. Why? The Bible tells us not to be yoked with unbelievers because we become a part of them. Whatever hatred, bitterness, rejection, uh, envy, jealousy is operating in them, when we tie ourselves to them and we uh, submit to that spirit, then it becomes, it becomes in us. Then we find ourselves acting unseemly. And act in a way that's not our character. Where did it come from? It came from that soul tie. So I submit to you today, watch your family ties. Watch your ties. Watch your soul ties. Because the enemy want to yoke you. He want to put a yoke on your neck. He wants you to um, 
operate in your flesh. He don't want you to be led by the spirit. He want to yoke you to those carnal-minded people, those people who operate in their flesh, those people who don't trust, who don't believe God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God. So watch your ties. You know, be mindful of who you yoke yourself to because who, who is your family? Those that do the will of God. So, guys, if this has been helpful, please like and um, like it if it's been helpful. If you believe that you would benefit from my teachings or on supplements and um, the study of the word, please subscribe. Uh, you guys have a blessed day.